Good morning, folks. Beginning with the sun and 304 angstroms seeing ionized helium. The lack of movement and coronal surging is indicative of a quiet sun, and that is mostly the story up there. Not so much back here at Earth, and we'll discuss that and our top stories and weather from around the globe. Let's first begin over at spaceweathernews.com, finding the last day on our star here. Top eruption threat remains the writhing plasma filament center disk. They're thin and dark. We'll be watching them today, and we also see the next coronal hole incoming on the left. Solar flaring is the definition of flatlined. Once the big sunspot group departed, there was no more X-ray potential on the disk, and energetic flux is falling. However, the particle aspect of things is just getting interesting. This is the beginning of the leading density shockwave ahead of a fast coronal hole stream impacting Earth. Speed should rise throughout the day, and we're already at unstable magnetic levels, so global storm conditions could crop up. The culprit is the negative departing coronal hole, and as we mentioned a moment ago, the next one is incoming. This one is positive. Over to the left, your eyes should be able to see that it is transequatorial. So the next earthquake uptick won't be for a few more days as we enter a lull now with the most interesting rumble of the last day being well north in the Arctic Circle. We shift now to our top stories. Folks, that's a before and after image taken of a star that is extremely lonely and out in the vastness of space by himself. The more interesting thing is that it appears to have increased in brightness by hundreds of times in just a few years. The brightness has faded slightly since then, but nowhere near at the rate of intensification. Lonely star likely lighting up nearby dust and gas to ionize states. Quick look at Hawaii, where lava reached the ocean this week for the first time since 2013. And we come to the weather. Folks, we've been following the millions of people affected in India from flooding. In this area in general, all the way east to the typhoon candidate taking a run at Vietnam and China, will be expecting major rainfall to continue for at least two to three days. There is no relief in sight, and this monsoon season will not be one to forget for them. Some already saying it's the worst in decades, with national parks submerged and a huge portion of the endangered rhino species at direct risk. Shifting gears next to the U.S., where heat and moisture coming up out of the Gulf should affect a large region of the east today, so keep your eyes on local forecasts, especially with strong levels of available potential energy expected in the atmosphere. In Europe, we're eyeing that earth spot over the water that draws multiple concentric rain bands whose effect will be felt all the way east in Moscow. Lots of Earth spots taking on the southern hemisphere at the moment. Chile and South Africa have the top alerts at the moment, but Argentina won't be left out by the time it's done doing its thing. Last but not least, watch the high over Australia. That's fairly standard, clearing the path, and only peripheral rainfall should be expected anywhere north of Tasmania. I'd love to take a moment to thank those of you who have supported this collective of enthusiasts. Many of you have been here for three years at the website and even longer on YouTube. You've come to the conferences, saw the Mobile Observatory on tour, and supported the Disaster Prediction app, which is coming in just a few months. I can't tell you how much you are appreciated. It's 3.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.